mentioned the cell danger response. Let's talk a little bit more about that and how that ties into inflammation. Yeah, so part of the cell danger response, I mean, inflammation in small doses is great for you, right? Yeah. It helps you kind of immobilize. It allows all the fluids and healing aspects of your body to get in there and work its magic. And it's supposed to be like everything, you know, stress, inflammation. It's supposed to be acute, you know, short, contained. Like you get a little cold, your throat hurts for a day, and then you feel better the next day. Mm -hmm. What sadly happens is that it becomes more chronic and drawn out. And this is where the cell danger response comes into play. When your body is kind of stuck in that chronic and prolonged stress inflammatory state, that's when those um, messages, you know, it's, it's a little bit like you hear the car alarm on the street, right? At a certain point it shuts down. Imagine that car alarm like never stops beeping. Yeah. That is your cell danger response. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, and so it just continues to go on and on and uh, the body really, when the body's in survival mode, it starts increasing inflammation. And we know that because most people have died from chronic systemic infections. And so the body, when it's in survival, it feels like it's under threat for one of these infections. And inflammation is really the antidote to that. It helps protect us from dying from meningitis or from pneumonia or something like that. However, Unfortunately, you know, when, when inflammation gets turned on and stays on, we end up damaging all of our tissues and, you know, developing chronic degenerative conditions, degenerative diseases. So, you know, super important that we turn off that cell danger response, turn on more of that parasympathetic nervous system. So, you know, you started talking about some of the essential oils and utilizing those. What are some other really good strategies people can use to help balance their nervous system? Yeah. And you, you know, you mentioned also, so there's the, the parasympathetic nervous system that works in tandem with your endocrine system, your hypothalamus yeah. pituitary adrenal axis, which is what kind of sends out that high cortisol response that, that basically what happens is the early stage of stress, you're sending out the high cortisol response, but your body can kind of keep up. It's a little bit like a marathon, right? You know, the first yeah. 10 miles, you kind of got it. <laughs> then the next 10, you're getting a little bit tired. By the time you cross the finish line, you're a little depleted because you, you're you not designed to keep going in perpetuity. And what's mm -hmm. interesting, you know, obviously, if there's a real danger, uh, that should turn on. But so much of our response to stress is thought driven. And it becomes, it's this loop. Your hypothalamus tells your pituitary to tell your adrenals to release cortisol. The hypothalamus then kind of um, weighs, you know, reads the amount of cortisol in the bloodstream and at a certain point tells the adrenals to stop producing. This is called the negative feedback loop. But what can happen in a chronic stress state is your hypothalamus gets a little dysregulated and doesn't necessarily recognize, you know, to send the off switch. So one of the great things about smelling is that that goes directly to your hypothalamus. So that's a really good way to kind of return it to balance. A, a lot of um, plants are known as adaptogenic, which means they help you adapt. So, right. you know, I, if people have taken kind of the 24 hour cortisol saliva test, it's not like your cortisol level is flatlined. You know, it's supposed to be high in the morning to give you energy and then drop at night to allow you to sleep. And usually what happens is it's dysregulated. So it's low when it's supposed to be high, it's high when it's supposed to be low. And so, you know, there are certain remedies that can um, boost your adrenal function or calm your adrenal function. And it's a little bit of like, what should I take when? But adaptogenic herbs meet you when you're, where you're at. So if you, you know, if your cortisol is too low, they help to bring it up. If it's mm -hmm. too high, it helps to bring it down. And so oils, like we have an adrenal brand, blend that's really good at kind of being an adaptogen. Lavender is an easy one that most people, mm -hmm. it you know, it's kind of like Benadryl. It can make you fall asleep or it can make you hyper. It kind of depends on your own chemistry. But for a lot of people, that's very calming. Um, another cool trick that I actually talked about in my summit Oftentimes when you, know, you have two hemispheres of the brain that ideally are supposed to be in balance, but often they're not. And when you're having kind of that anxiety attack in the moment, that's often your right frontal lobe that's overactive. And so anything you can do to trigger your left frontal lobe helps mm -hmm. to put the two in balance. And as you know, your, your nose, your olfactory nerve goes directly right nostril, right frontal lobe, left nostril, left frontal lobe. Yeah. So one trick is just plugging your right nostril, smelling something through your left, 
often right within into that left brain. Exactly. Stimulates the left, balances the hemispheres. And um, I, I speak from personal experience. I used to have anxiety attacks all the time. And this mm -hmm. was such, not only does it um, calm you in the moment, but I, I, it's very rare that I have one now. Like I feel like it kind of retrains your brain.